Hello and welcome to another Explorer Games the video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue devotion combo deck and one of the reasons I'm revisiting this old standard archetype that I featured a couple years ago is that we now have access to Jace Reawakened in the format and as you may know you cannot cast it during your first, second or third turns of the game. One potential workaround is if you start the game with a ley line of anticipation on the battlefield because now you can still play Jace during the opponent's second turn and then untap with it on turn three. So that's pretty nice nice and then Jace helps us plot cards from our hand which gives us a pretty big mana discount over the course of the game and can also draw and discard eventually maybe copy some of our spells so that's one of the reasons why I wanted to revisit this deck and of course our eventual game plan is to build up a lot of mana using a Nykthos Shrine to Nyx which wants us to have lots of blue mana symbols on our permanence and then a Nyx Lotus works in a very similar way and then eventually after making a lot of mana we want to draw a lot of cards using Seagate Restoration which can double our hand size essentially and then finally of Revelation an X spell which can also help untap Nykthos if we cast it for X equals 10 or more and then also have a one of Gadwick which can do something pretty similar and then eventually after drawing enough cards and building up our blue devotion we can cast Thassa's Oracle to win the game and we don't even need to have an empty library since this also tracks our blue devotion which could easily reach 15 or 20 so we can have quite a few cards left in our deck and still win the game with Thassa's Oracle and then even if the opponent somehow removes Oracle a few times we can also shuffle it back into our library with Finale of Revelation so that's not really a concern and play Oracle early is also still fine since it gives us quite a bit of card selection to look for all these combo pieces and then rounding out the deck we need some ways to untap Nyx Lotus and Nykthos so we can draw a lot of cards untap them and then keep making more mana to keep comboing off in one big turn basically so that's where Kiora will come in handy can untap both of them potentially multiple times over the course of a few turns and then the Vizier of Tumbling Sands will often end up cycling for one on a blue drawing a card and untapping a permanent in the process or we can occasionally cast it which also helps us ramp and then it can maybe activate multiple times pretty nice to immediately be able to untap tap your Nyx Lotus after playing it so it can immediately start making extra mana and then a Leyline of Anticipation as we said not only good for Blue Devotion but also great at enabling the Academy Lore Master which gives us two Blue Devotion early on and then lets us draw an additional card each turn with a drawback of having to pay two extra mana for those spells during our turn but during the opponent's turn we can once again cast our spells normally so we get to often draw an extra card whereas the opponent doesn't and that's another great way to pull ahead alongside our Leyline of Anticipation and then some other instant speed plays we can make while keeping up mana with the lore master include Jory Disruption as a counter spell although we'll often play it as a land as well and Merfolk Trickster as a way to tap an opposing creature down and remove its abilities until end of turn can also maybe save us that one extra turn that we need to be able to combo off and then witness protection another removal effect for opposing creatures turning them into 1-1 citizens but still keeping that one blue devotion for as long as that creature stays on the battlefield so that can also help out and sometimes we can cast it on turn three after having drawn an extra card with a lore master so that will also take up our entire turn and uh, yeah that pretty much sums up our whole deck and uh, the mana base has one soaring city has more interaction and then castle ventress to scry although for the most part we'll be using our mana to cast all these extra card draw spells so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the draw and uh, yeah this is definitely a keeper it may look like a one lander but it's actually a three lined hand And then turn two we can flash in Lore Master. And then turn three we could already play Nyx Lotus thanks to Nykthos making four mana. Our opponent's blue red. And Balmor, so Wizards, likely with a new slick shot. Alright, so that's scary. We could witness protection Balmor. Although it doesn't allow me to set up turn 3 Nyx Lotus like we described. So I think I let them have a turn. Could always witness protection at instant speed of course. And for now take the 1. Opponent with light up. That's fine. Finding skewer and another light up. So our opponent's not messing around. They 
might have the wizard counter spell as well here. Yep, wizard's retort. That's too bad. So now I can play Lotus. I could, however, still witness protection Balmore. And then since we just drew Revelation, I probably don't need the Restoration as much. And I can just play Tapped. And want to main phase this so they don't get to pump up Balmore. Still good enough to enable Spectacle. So yeah, the Wizard's Retort slowing us down pretty significantly. But hopefully we still have time to set up here as our opponent finds Monstrous Rage. And another Lore Master the draw. So now I'm in favor of Nyx Lotus, could main phase it to play around another counter spell. And then next turn we can uh, play Lore Master to increase our devotion and make a bunch of mana and hope to combo off. Okay. Zero points going for it. At 13, we should be relatively safe here. Alright, now the fun thing about Leyline is we can mostly combo off at instant speed, although we won't be able to use cards like Kiora. So, how do we want to sequence? Could play Kiora. Lotus makes 4 mana. And then we can untap it, and then maybe pass the turn. Although I guess the mana would kind of go to waste here if I don't use it right away. So then I would probably just combo now. Yeah, sure. Play Loremeister. Make some more mana. Finally, drawing 10 cards would untap our lanes once again. Although now I might be running into a Wizard's Retort. So maybe now I should just pass. And wait for them to tap out a bit more. Wizard sliding going face. Alright, so now we can try and combo once again. So this will be for 8, which is not enough to untap Nykthos, so I need to do this first. Could play Witness Protection, but I'll hang on to it in case we need it. Okay, and then we have a bunch of tools available. Can uh, tap Nykthos. I guess I don't have an instant speed untap effect. So I guess we'll just have to pass a turn here. deciding whether they want an extra card or not. They do not. And Lava Runners next. We do have a couple Merfolk Tricksters we can flash in at least. And then next turn I can cast a large Gadwick to hopefully close it out. Opponent counters, that's acceptable. Play another Trickster. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and uh, yeah, I've got a Ley Line, so I feel inclined to keep. Don't have a whole lot going on in the first few turns. 
Jace would be a great top deck, as we can cast it during the opponent's turn. Well, speak of the devil. Opponent playing with Keruga, so don't expect too many counter spells. And then we can maybe plot Thassa's Oracle while we play Nykthos. So pretty awesome turn three so far. And then next turn I could potentially go off already. We have most of the pieces in place, Nykthos, Lotus, Plenty of Devotion, card draw, more mana. So wouldn't be shocked if we can win on turn four. Untapped Sacred Foundry, could maybe see a lockdown deal with Jace. Nope, just a beanstalk. Okay, so opponents tapped out pretty much. Unless they have Mystical Dispute, which by getting an island they could have. I'm gonna Thassa's Oracle before my draw step. Uh, let's see. I guess never mind, I can only do it as a sorcery, so that doesn't work with plot. Otherwise I could have gotten rid of Nyx Lotus. Alright, it does not seem like they have a Mystical Dispute in hand. And then, yeah, I guess I could put another Finale on top, or maybe just an Island to draw into, since we get to untap lands with Finale as well. And then, step one, draw with Jace. Play the land. Make a bunch of mana. Can cycle Vizier, or we can Finale first. Uh, it's safer to cycle the Vizier just to make sure we have this mana available in case I tap too much mana. Okay, and then... Yeah, I guess we'll play another Oracle first. And then I can still Finale for at least 10 to untap my lands. Finding... Kiora to untap Lotus once again. Okay, so use Nykthos, play Kiora, which will untap Lotus. Then we want to increase our devotion before tapping the Lotus, which I can do by playing some Lore Masters. Tap this for 15. Vizier can untap it. Gadwick for can make it ten here. So Lotus will make eighteen mana. Cast a restoration. Double checking that I don't end up decking here, but should be fine. Viziers will make more mana, and then it's just a matter of Playing another Thassa's Oracle, which I guess we can already do now. Okay. Not bad. Turn 4 kill. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This time without Leyline, sadly. But I think I still gotta keep. Turn to Loremaster. Got uh, Nykthos already. And hope to... Uh, leverage that into extra cards up against Red-White Heroic, which is a matchup where we're gonna need a bit of creature interaction, whether it's Merfolk Trickster or the uh, one-mana aura. Turn to Virtuoso is bad news, so yeah, this seems like a pretty bad matchup for us. Disruption on the draw just doesn't quite cut it, although it does allow me to play Lore Master and then maybe next turn draw a card and keep up Disruption in the opponent's turn. But they got their expensive creature in play already, so now it's just a bunch of cantrips to pump up Virtuoso and win the game. See, so if we don't find a Witness Protection or a Merfolk Trickster, I don't see us uh, surviving the next couple turns. Opponent declined to draw the extra card. 
kicking things off with Ancestral Anger. So, don't expect to die this turn, although it could be possible. But uh, next turn is more likely. Yeah, if we were on the play, maybe we get to Disruption of the Virtuoso, although they might play around a Counterspell and instead play more one drops. And we can't really afford to keep up Disruption the entire time when we don't have a Ley Line to play stuff at instant speed. So yeah, without Ley Line, our deck looks a lot worse, as you can imagine. So this is an attack for 15. Yeah. I'm at 3. They are stuck on two lanes, but they have pretty much lethal on board. So they don't need to do much else. So I don't think Disruption's gonna save me here. They found a land. If we had a Merfolk Trickster and they don't have a protection spell, then maybe we can survive an extra turn. But I also don't see us winning with 4 mana here. So opponent gets to attack. Gotta chump the Virtuoso, and I'm sure they'll have a Monstrous Rage to give a Trample. And that's gonna be game over. Alright, GG's. Can cycle Vizier, untap a lane, see if we would've found maybe a Merfolk Trickster after all. We did not the ley lines late to the party. But yeah, it's always good to have a reality check here. And uh, yeah, when you don't draw a ley line, the deck doesn't look nearly as impressive. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play once again with ley lines, so I'm not going to complain. Also have Nykthos, so we can make quite a bit of mana here. So Thassa's Oracle will be looking for a card draw effect, although now Loremaster can be played on turn 2 instead. Perfect combo with Leyline, since we can play it in the opponent's turn so they don't get a chance to draw first. And then uh, we can cast spells in the opponent's turn to mitigate the drawback. Opponent on Blue-Red Phoenix. And I'll draw. And then we already have access to 4 mana here. Can't wait to witness protection of Phoenix at instant speed. Opponent unlikely to draw the extra card here. Although you never know, they have quite a few instants in their deck as well. But yeah, opponent declines, they probably want to use some removal. It's going to be Prismari Command to make a treasure as well, sure. That's acceptable. Discarding double Phoenix, but they won't be able to get those back right now. Okay, so what do we want to do here? Make four mana. So I could use Vizier to untap Nykthos. I guess I didn't accomplish a whole lot here. That's fine, we'll play Kiora for now. Is this a spell pierce? It is. Alright, at least they had to use a treasure, so it'll be harder for them to get back Phoenix next turn. And then I could upkeep cast Oracle, although I do give up on Nykthos mana, so I'll just take the extra draw step and cast Oracle in their turn. And then, as I've said, just looking for a big card draw effect. Our opponent's going to impulse, so we got to respond. Does potentially give them a second target for removal. But uh, we might get a bit more devotion with the Oracle trigger. Our 
they're gonna impulse that one. Still get to dig four cards deep. And find another lore master. They likely have another cane trip, so a double phoenix comes back, although one of them will be enchanted. I guess they could still spell pierce again here. Alright, that worked, so no haste on the phoenix. Alright, our hand could be better. We've drawn a few too many islands along the way. That's where Sea Get Restoration is also quite nice. Is your opponent using more cantrips? Is there another Phoenix coming into play? I don't think I want to block the business person necessarily, because then Phoenix goes back to the graveyard where they can bring it back as a 3-2 flyer. Alright, Treasure Cruise will draw three. Fair enough. Take four. And does Loremaster get to untap here? Seems unlikely. Alright, we do. Find Oracle. Draw my extra card. And a Kiora. So I could still cast this for 5 mana if I want to, but even though I don't get to activate it by flashing it in, I think that's still fine here. So we'll pass. Could attack for 2, I guess. Opponent declines to draw. That's what we like to see. Hardcast Phoenix. So we're getting hit for seven. Okay, well, big turn here. If Oracle can dig deep enough to find Revelation, we could be all right. And then now do I block the business person taking six as opposed to seven? Could make a difference, so I guess we'll go for it. Now that they're tapped out. And then find Finale. This could be the pick. I did decrease my devotion by one, so that was the drawback. Now we could Finale at instant speed in the opponent's turn, draw an extra card here. I think I just want to combo off now while I can. Uh, so I'll decline. And then we want to make a bunch of mana. Didn't have to tap all my lands, but want to tap at least five. And then uh, untap Nykthos, make more mana. And then finally for, let's say, 12 here. Okay, we should have the tools to keep going. So I want to get this Lotus in play and untap it. So let's say we use Nykthos. Play Lotus. Play another Kiora, or we can use Vizier. Untap Lotus. Can uh, increase my devotion a little bit more. I've got more oracles in the deck. I 
Oracle finds Oracle. And then now tap this for 10. Can okay, I see get restoration? So we have 26 cards left in library. And uh, we just need another untap effect, Vizier. Untap Lotus. And then finale again could do it. Currently our devotion's 10, so yeah, I do need to draw a few more cards here. Untap Nykthos. Okay, 18 cards left. So just want to increase our devotion some more. Got Lore Master. Uh oh. Almost messed up here. The auto tapper not tapping Nykthos. Good thing we have Vizier we can still cycle. Alright, and then Devotion is 14, so can't quite play Oracle yet, but I guess we have two of them. Yeah, I guess don't trust the auto tapper when it comes to Nykthos. Alright, and then now 17 Devotion should do it. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand's pretty sad. Yeah, just kind of lacking the payoffs we're looking for. This is better. Get to start with Leyline. And then, what do we put on the bottom? I imagine we keep the Lotus. Maybe get rid of Trickster, even though it's my only early play. But Gadwick could both be an enabler for Lotus as well as a payoff. And then lands are good. Shafet Junes is a bad sign, means white aggro. Oracle was a decent draw at least. And then the initiate can also blow up artifacts and enchantments, so it's not what we wanted to see. Thalia is eventually going to be annoying, although for now we can maybe ambush it with Thassa's Oracle. Assuming they don't pump the team. Oof, Lieutenant. Yeah, that's gonna pump Thalia now. So no ambushing it, and they even get to train the Initiate, so I can't block anything. That's brutal. Well, I can still play Oracle and set up my next draw. Witness Protection for two mana. I mean, I guess it uh, shrinks down Thalia a little bit. Although I might have to hit the Initiate, which is gonna blow up my stuff. Yeah, I think this game's over, but what's the best play? Gadwick's just a 3-3, also not the biggest blocker. So how do we win this? Probably just by stemming the bleeding. I don't think I have time to set up a big card draw Gadwick. So is there any draw that's potentially better? I guess if we draw Nykthos, I can draw one card of Gadwick. Maybe that's what I need. I don't think Witness Protection is good enough. No, no Nykthos. So now we're just looking at a 3-3 Gadwick at instant speed. Mutavolt gonna get busy. Nope. Attack all out. A lieutenant staying back. Alright, let's see if Gadwick can maybe help us block. They might have another Iganjo in hand. And brave the elements, naming blue. So this affects only white creatures, so I can still block Mutavolt. Take nine. Alright, could have been worse. 
Although I still can't play Nyx Lotus. I can, however, channel Soaring City for 3 mana, so I could even play a tapped Disruption. I assume channeling Soaring City is going to be better than the off chance that we get to uh, counter a 3-drop. Although if they play Adlin, I'm going to regret it potentially. But I guess I would be dead on board regardless. So that's not an option. So we can pass. And it's going to be a bodyguard next. That happens. Protecting Thalia. So what makes the most sense to uh, bounce here? Bounce Thalia and then double block the initiate, take three down to one. And I'll have one blocker left. Yeah, that's not a winning situation. So I can't really think of any outs here. I'm gonna take out Gadwick. I have four devotion left. Nyx Lotus enters tapped. The Vizier is uh, not quite enough. Can uh, cycle it here, maybe get a redraw. If I just cast it, that's not gonna suffice. And another ley line, which is also taxed by Thalia. All right, GG's on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got Leyline and some early interaction, so definitely keeping. And then turn to Oracle. Up against what looks like a aggressive, maybe prowess deck. Ooh, Jace, all right. I think I gotta play Restoration here, since we don't have a ton of mana yet to cast it. And definitely don't want to take three against an aggro deck. Steamkin, all right. So give up the opportunity of using uh, Witness Protection on turn one. But now I might go for Jace, so we can start plotting. Hazardous Monument, I see. So this might be a Burgi Storm combo deck. So we want to probably keep at least one Witness Protection for Burgi. If Steam can attack, I'll ambush it. And our opponent reconsiders, so I'll get Jace down. So we can start plotting. And then... I don't really want to plot Thassa's Oracle, although I guess we could just cast Vizier as well. I might want to Witness Protection the Steamkin before it gets a chance to trigger. So, yeah, a lot of options here. Nykthos makes 4 mana. So I could also main phase cast Vizier and then Witness Protection the Steamkin plot Thassa's Oracle. That's a pretty decent use of our mana. And then next turn we can keep digging towards uh, more action. So yeah, Nykthos will make all the mana we need, and then Oracle should be able to find a card draw effect. And then we still have a Witness Protection for Burgi. It's going to be a second Steamkin. Now we don't want to block the business person since it provides a devotion for us. I say Grinning Ignis. Alright, well, I guess our opponent's can uh, potentially go off. Although, let's see. Yeah, I guess they're missing the red mana to activate Ignis. But next turn, they could certainly go for it. So, instant speed witness protection might be what we need to survive. Found another Vizier, so that's actually great, because now I can keep a great card on top, and then Vizier draws into it by cycling, or Jace can draw into it. But uh, the extra mana doesn't hurt. Seagate Restoration. 
is probably good enough for now. Could also go for Nyx Lotus to make even more mana. But I think card draws the limiting factor. So, yeah, we can uh, cycle Vizier. Or we can use Jace. I guess I'll use Jace. Cast a Restoration to draw three. Although I might want to actually cycle Vizier first, so I have the mana to use Nykthos. Okay, cast a Restoration now. Find another Restoration. And then I haven't played land for a turn yet. Keeping the witness protection in hand for the time being. Okay, found Kiora and a Nyx Lotus, so is that good enough? Well, I guess I can't really fully combo off here since I'm missing a card draw effect. So what's the plan? Play another Thassa's Oracle to set up my next draw step and keep up as much interaction as possible, meaning Trickster and Witness Protection times two. Play another Nykthos. And then I can play Nyx Lotus and Kiora. And then Nyx Lotus can help cast all my spells in their turn. And then I suppose I could play the Oracle now. Even though I get to dig a little bit deeper if I wait until I put more stuff in play. But I think this will be alright. And there's a finale, so next turn we should be able to go for it. And hopefully this is enough interaction here. Could have started by using Witness Protection on Ignus and Steamkin. Kinda waiting to see if they have Burgi in hand. Right, it's going to be Ourobrask instead. Okay, so that can also eventually get there, I suppose. And then Warlord's Fury. Alright, so now we want to definitely respond. So our opponent doesn't have any floating mana, so they can't actually use Grinning Ignis until Ourobrask resolves. So... I think we just lock down everything. And then our opponent gets a redraw, but they don't have all the mana they need. Steamkin lost its ability to make three mana. We get to untap and then revelation for the win. Alright, so we get to see our Blue Devotion deck in action. I'll start off by saying that I would not recommend this deck. It's not a very competitive choice, so don't expect it to be a great deck for the latter. That being said, if you do get to start with a Leyline on the battlefield, the deck starts looking quite a bit better, and you can start setting up those powerful combos with Nykthos and the Lotus as well. The games where you don't draw Leyline, those are sadly going to be about half the time then uh, the deck just feels pretty underpowered and too slow to compete in the Explorer meta. And even if you do have a ley line, you still need a few other pieces to come into place at the right time. So overall, just a bit inconsistent to be a competitive choice, but the games where it goes off are a lot of fun. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.